Well, thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here today. Um, app R&D is one of the most important things out there in the whole app development process. Um, it's where the excitement happens, it's where things can go wrong, and it's where you uh, rally people around you to actually make sure that things um, uh, get built. So many children that I've spoken to, um, and I'm in the children's business, lots of them have great ideas. They have this big idea and they want to go out and they want to create the next app that does wonderful things. Um, but, um, and all of them are driven very much by their passion and by their interest in something. Sometimes they're slightly influenced by the people around them and what's hot right now. But I think uh, if you look at Mark Zuckerberg, Mark um, set up Facebook with a very personal uh, objective, and that was to check out all the girls at Harvard. So he was very passionate about this. Um, Daniel Ek at Spotify was a big lover of music. So that was really the passion that drove him as he created Spotify. But I think it's really important, and there are lots of entrepreneurs and app developers that um, are overly driven just by passion and their interest in something. And often they forget the brain bit to use their head to really think about, well, is there a market out there for this app or is it just me? Um, who's my target audience? So these are classical marketing questions that one needs to ask them, uh, themselves when you get started. Um, often children come to me with ideas to saying, I love to play tennis, for example, and I want to create an app that is all about tennis. And it's for people like me that love tennis. Well, often they have these irrational projections, and even adults have these. So they say, because I feel this strongly about this idea, uh, and I can make sense of it, therefore the rest of the world must obviously also love this idea. And uh, at the end of the day, I will make lots of money on this. Lots of kids don't think about the money bit yet, but they assume that success is a, um, a derivative of their passion and how much time that they put into it. This is one of the strengths of an entrepreneur that just rallies uh, ahead and uh, focuses on creating the, the next big thing, but also it's one of the major pitfalls that um, often results in, in failure. And the reality is, if you look at the App Store, it's, it's, there are thousands, there are millions of, of apps out there. So if you have an idea for a new app, um, whether it's a, an alphabet app, for example, or whether it's a tennis app, um, I'll bet you that if you do a little bit of research just in the Apple App Store, you will find tens, twenties, you know, 30 different apps that do almost the, the same thing that, the, that you're doing. And if you look at how the App, the, the app Store actually works, um, and the level of success that you need to have to actually recoup your investment in an app, it's only really about one in a thousand apps out there that generate enough revenue to sustain just a small company with two or three people. So um, I think this is really important um, as a first thing to, uh, to consider when you get started building apps, whether you are eight years old or 30 years old. The R&D process is quite key, and I've chosen just to highlight three important points today. Um, that I think are useful for, for everybody. First, you need to really understand, is there a market need for this product? Is this something that I just like to uh, play with and something that me and my immediate friends would use? Or is this something that can serve a bigger need in the market? Secondly, what is the winning formula? How, will I, how can I create a product that's, that's um, either different and better than what's currently in the marketplace? Or how can I create a product that is so intuitive and so desirable that um, if my product is the first of its kind, people will naturally just flock to it? And thirdly, how do I actually go about building a product? How do I test it in each of the stages early on? Often starting with a paper model is not actually a bad idea. So let me just talk briefly about the market need. I've created a simple two by two matrix here. And you can see on the y-axis you have a question about is there already a solution in the market today, yes or no. And on the x-axis, um, are people generally satisfied with the tools available uh, today? And if you first look at uh, the lower uh, left-hand quadrant, you can see, well, if there is a solution today and people are happy with it, the likelihood of you creating another app that's going to make them switch to your app are almost 
you know, um, non-existent. So there's a huge risk of you actually wasting your time if you start out um, in this particular quadrant. If there isn't a solution today, but people are quite happy with how they, you know, get along with solving their, 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 their problems today, this could be that there isn't an app for it, but the market doesn't actually, or people don't actually see a need for an app. They're quite happy using the old fashioned way of solving a problem. There's also a huge risk that people are not gonna use it because you need to educate them. You need to change their behavior, and that's hugely difficult. Um, if uh, there is a solution today, but people aren't very happy with it, um, it's actually a really interesting uh, opportunity because they have a frame of reference. They're used to using a product or an app. They're used to paying for a product in that space, but they're not quite happy with it. So if you can create something that is significantly better in that category, it's very easy, it's relatively easier for, for people to then switch and start using your app than the one that they were already using. And as new technology become available, new software becomes available, et cetera, it opens up opportunities almost several times a year for coming up with the next version of something. But the best place to start is really to say, well, there isn't a solution today, and uh, people are really, really unhappy with the fact that there isn't a solution today. So this is what some people call white space. So if you can find a white space where no apps exist today, and um, um, by speaking to people, you identify that they really would love to have an app in that space that could solve just that important um, um, challenge for them, then you are starting out with a high probability of creating a successful product. The winning formula. I think there's a, um, quite a lot of things you can say about how to create a winning formula for an app, but I've chosen to focus on three things today. The first thing is to um, focus on um, what is the one thing that you want people to feel, experience with your app? What is it that you would like people to, who have played with your app, um, what, what is it you would like them to tell their friend at the coffee shop, I played this great app that dot, 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 dot. There has to be one overriding core benefit of this product, one fun feature, something that just delights you and you need to think about that way up front. The second thing is to keep it simple. Um, whether you are five or you are 30, people are quite impatient when it comes to apps. If they have to click through too, too many screens or go back and the navigation doesn't really work, uh, you've lost them. They close the app and they go to the next one. So keeping it simple, and I like to think that um, you should uh, be able to use the app and accomplish what you're trying to do in the app in max three clicks. Uh, and if those three clicks are enjoyable swipes, you have fun kind of animations and things happening within the app, so much the better. So keep it really, really simple. Start with testing something that's really simple, just that one thing, that one delight factor that you would love for, um, for people to talk about, and test that. And then make sure that whatever you create is something you can come back and replay many times, or reuse many times. If you're creating a linear experience that you just use once, well, then people will only use it once. And that means that the value of this product is much lower, um, and that's hard. So if you can create a product that you can use thousands of times, whether it's a social app or whether it's a, a creative app, um, you are much more likely to create a success in the marketplace. And the final point I wanted to make is about prototyping. I think there are a lot of... Uh, a lot of um, uh, misconceptions and uh, lack of clarity on how you actually test a product. Um, and uh, in the physical space, uh, if you're creating a new product, you need tooling, it's very expensive, and uh, you need distribution and stuff, it's, it's kind of difficult. But um, in, the, in the app space, you can actually create something very, very simple, and very basic, very fast for very little money. Um, Often what we do in Mindshapes is we actually start out by creating just prototypes in paper and we put it in front of people and we ask them to play with it and see what they think. Because it's that kind of core um, playability or, or core use of the app that you would want to test early on before you pour in thousands of pounds in actually building it. And even when you pour in thousands of pounds to build it, make sure that you're just creating a simple version to start and you learn from that experience. You put the product in the hands of, of, um, of children or adults, and you let them play with it, and you talk to them about it. You observe them, how they use this app. And then you go back to the drawing board, and then you create an upgrade. 
it's very important that you don't um, just put out an app and leave it to die, so to speak. Apps are digital products. They're organic. They need to evolve, develop, just like people. So um, um, it's, 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 it's key that you test your apps, and you come back to them, you play with them, you involve them. And you can do upgrades once a month if you have anything uh, meaningful to, uh, to upgrade them with. So whether you are five years old, or you are fresh out of university, or you are 45 years old, and you have this great idea for an app, you can actually start out with very limited means and just putting together concepts and testing them with people. And then once you have positive feedback, you then go to the next step in your prototyping, and then eventually you end up by launching a beautiful app that the market wants, that's simple to play, and that's fun to come back and play over and over again. Those were my words for today. Thank you very much.